Thanks for purchasing a Hawkeye Portable Fish Finder. My name is Gabe and I'm the Hawkeye Advisor. I'm here today to demonstrate how to use and care for the Hawkeye F33P Portable Fish Finder. Let me begin by explaining how a fish finder works. Greatly simplified, a fish finder is just a combination of a speaker, microphone, and stopwatch. It transmits a sound pulse from the sonar sensor and then measures the time it takes for the echoes to return to the sonar sensor. The fish finder knows that the speed of sound through water is about 4,800 feet per second. Fish, rocks, weed, and the bottom all echo the pulse at a different intensity. A built-in computer then organizes all this information and shows it on a display screen in a manner that is easy for the user to understand. Now let's dive into the F33P packaging. In the box, you should have your handheld display, a transducer with a float kit, a bag containing your storage bag, lanyard and side scan adapter, and another bag containing your manual and your warranty registration card. If you do not have any of these items, please contact support at norcrossmarine.com and we'll rush one to you. You will need to install the batteries. The F33P requires four alkaline AAA batteries. For winter ice fishing, we recommend using lithium batteries as they will perform in extreme temperatures down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. To install the batteries, Slide the cover down about a quarter of an inch and lift it off the fish finder housing. Install the batteries, making sure to align the batteries as per the illustration in the battery compartment. Reinstall the cover by aligning the tabs with the grooves on the housing and then slide it up until it locks. Now let's connect the transducer. You will need to lift the protective rubber cover to access the plug socket. The rubber cover includes a hole that you can use to keep the cable affixed to the housing. To use the cable holder, simply fish the cable connector through the rubber cover like this. Now let's press the transducer plug into the display housing. It is very important to make sure the plug is in tight. It should be somewhat difficult to remove when properly seated. It's worth me mentioning that a majority of the calls and emails we receive to our customer support center regarding fish finder issues are related to the improper connection of this transducer plug. Here's a little trick you can do to make sure the plug is in tight. Simply press the plug against the solid object until you hear a clicking sound. When it is properly connected and with the unit powered on, you will hear a very faint ticking sound from the transducer face. You will need to get it right next to your ear to hear. The transducer can also be attached to any household broomstick using the supplied side scan adapter. This is great for directing the sonar under docks, in and around structure, and under the ice when ice fishing. The adapter will also allow you to transom mount the unit to any boat, kayak, or canoe. However, keep in mind that this transducer is made to be portable and lacks the hydrodynamic properties required to use the transducer transom mounted while on plane. For this type of use, you can also use the shoot-through ability of the F33P to shoot through any solid fiberglass or aluminum hull. I'll address this technique later in this video. Now let's learn the basic functions of the F33P. It has various settings that can be adjusted by pressing and holding the setup button for five seconds. Once in setup mode, you will notice the icons in the top right hand side of the LCD screen will begin to flash. You can adjust the settings by pressing the enter button or you can move on to the next setting by pressing the setup button. While in setup mode, you can adjust the sensitivity, backlight, alarm, and a power save feature. To learn more about these features, please refer to your manual. About once a week we get a call from a customer who complains that their fish finder is not reading depth. Upon troubleshooting, we learn that they are trying to test the fish finder in various water containers like buckets, swimming pools, barrels, and the like. These types of containers cause the sonar to reverberate throughout the water, much like a hard rubber super ball will do when thrown in a small room. This reverberation confuses the sonar algorithms and will almost always cause dash lines to be displayed. The F33P, like all sonar devices, will only work in an open body of water, such as a lake, pond, ocean, or a river, like the beautiful St. John's River where we are today. Once you've familiarized yourself with the basic operation of the F33P, it's time to head out to the water and start using it. Let's begin by tossing the transducer in the water. As soon as the transducer settles, you should immediately notice the water depth in the upper left-hand corner of the LCD. If the depth does not appear, make sure you're using the unit between depths of 1.5 and 99.9 .9 feet. Also make sure the transducer plug is properly attached. Use the trick I showed you earlier to make sure the plug is properly seated 
and verify proper connection by listening for the ticking sound. When the fish are detected below the transducer, you notice the fish icons moving across the screen from right to left. This movement only indicates the presence of fish and in no way depicts the actual directional movement of the fish. If steady icons are present, like we have here, you can assume that there's either one fish stationary below the transducer or a school of fish are moving around within the sonar beam. On the right hand side, there is a vertical grid of 10 boxes. When a fish is detected, the box specifying the depth will turn black. If you divide the box number by the depth displayed at the top left corner, you can determine the depth of the fish. For example, if you're fishing in 10 feet of water and the third box down turns black, the fish is 3 feet deep. At 50 feet, the third box would indicate the fish is at 15 feet and so on. The virtue view display on your fish finder depicts bottom structure with a series of rock indicators. No rock indicators identify a structureless bottom. This depicts a bottom that is most likely sandy or muddy with no debris or contour. A good habitat for some fish, but not very desirable for ambush feeders. One rock indicator identifies limited structure. You would most likely find a small rock, a small pile of rocks, or uneven bottom contour. This is not a bad place for hiding fish, but due to the limited amount of structure, there may not be a lot. Two rock indicators identifies a considerable amount of bottom structure, but scattered. A considerable amount of time needs to be spent fishing this area as each piece of structure could be hiding a prize catch. Three rock indicators indicates a large amount of bottom structure in a confined area. This bottom may consist of rocks, stumps, trees, or a ledge. The weed ID feature incorporated into the fish finder depicts the amount of weed at the bottom of the water body. The display indicates the presence of short weeds by turning on the smallest weed ID indicator. Moderately tall weeds are depicted by turning on the second weed ID indicator. Tall weeds are depicted by turning on the third weed ID indicator. If the prey that you are targeting prefers a weed habitat, you should try to fish your bait as close to the top of the weeds as possible. Installing a weed guard on your hook will prevent accidental snagging of the weed. If you're targeting fish that prefer weed or structure, try this. If you're fishing from a boat, establish accurate readings by using the techniques in this manual. Next, slowly move the boat around the fishing area while paying close attention to the bottom structure and weed ID. Do not begin fishing until you discover the optimal spot for fishing, using your knowledge about the desired prey's feeding habitat and the fish finder readings. This may take a considerable amount of time, but if you find a secret spot, it will be well worth it. It can also be done from the shore by walking along the bank and tossing and retrieving the sensor out into the water in five foot intervals. Important. When you find that secret spot, keep it to yourself. There's nothing that ruins a secret spot quicker than word of mouth. The fish finder's advanced sonar capabilities allow it to shoot through the bottom of a boat, kayak, canoe hole, or ice. The vessels must be made out of solid fiberglass or a maximum of eighth inch thick aluminum and be in direct contact with the water with no air pockets. Ice must be black in color with very little trapped air. The unit will not work through wood, plastic, or any composite material. To shoot through the hull of a boat, do one of the following. Place the sonar sensor in a half inch of water against the hull bottom. Coat the face of the sonar sensor with petroleum jelly and press it against the bottom with a twisting motion. Or you can place the sonar sensor in a plastic bag that is full of water and place against the hull bottom. These methods will also be used when shooting through ice. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the first method. Notice we've affixed a piece of PVC pipe against the bottom of our test boat. This is a great way to ensure accurate readings without having to fill the bottom of your vessel with water. To obtain readings, simply fill the area with water, place the transducer in the hull, and depth and fish readings are now obtainable shooting through the hull while underway, even on plane. Finally, let's talk about caring for your fish finder. When you're finished using it, Clean the sonar sensor and cable with fresh water and dry off before storing. Do not submerge or spray the fish finder with water or use chemicals to clean. If necessary, wipe with a damp cloth. Remove the batteries from the fish finder to prevent battery leakage and corrosion. Store the fish finder in a storage bag in a cool, dry place. Never leave it in temperatures over 120 degrees Fahrenheit as the extreme temperatures can damage the electronic components. Thanks again for purchasing a Hawkeye F33P Portable Fish Finder. Here at Norcross Marine Products, we strive for 100% customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with your fish finder, first review your operator's manual, then rewatch this video. If you can't find a solution to the problem, 
feel free to call us at 888-7-NORCROSS during normal business hours. 24-hour technical support is also available online at hawkeyeelectronics.com where you can search our online knowledge base for the latest troubleshooting and FAQs or post your own questions for our support staff. For one-on-one -on -one support, please email support at norcrossmarine.com. Now get out there, wet your lines, catch some fish, and enjoy your freedom.